Hey, how are you doing? I hope you're doing okay because today I have an exciting video for you. Yesterday I showed you how I designed this OCXO upgrade board for my PM6665 frequency counter. And today we are going to um, test it and I'm going to show you how to calibrate it. Stay with me. So as I said before, this video is a follow-up of yesterday's video. So if you didn't see yesterday's video, um, the part one, go ahead and watch it now. So this is my frequency counter. Currently it has the uncompensated crystal time base, the original time base, which is based on a crystal oscillator and it is connected to my GPS DO. So it's not spot on. Uh, it's not too bad because I actually calibrated it a few years ago against another GPS DO, but it's definitely uh, a bit far away in terms of frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install my OCXO upgrade board in, in, inside and we're going to test it and calibrate it. The first thing I need to do is to make sure that the OCXO I have here is electrically compatible with the oscillator that was in there. As I explained before, um, based on the, the service manual schematics and the reverse engineering I did of the original oscillator, it should be fine. But because I don't want to damage the instrument, especially because this type of instrument often has, has some difficult to find um, ICs connected to the output of the oscillator, I definitely want to make sure everything is okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the unit and I'm going to probe the output of the existing oscillator with my oscilloscope. Um, a word of caution, this is only for experienced people who know the proper safety precaution. Uh, because this unit will be powered on, there are live voltages inside which can be deadly if you make a mistake. So proceed at your own risk if you choose to do it and this is only for highly qualified people. So with that being said, um, let's open the unit and uh, le let's see how it looks like inside. So the original oscillator is right there, I don't need to open the unit further. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to probe the output and see just the voltage levels, check that everything is fine. So luckily the, um, the ground is available right there, it's super easy. And the signal is available right here. So there are some oscillations, but th that's okay. And if we look at the peak to peak voltage, two volts per division, four volts peak to peak, the um, zero level is at zero, the high level is at 4.5 volts. That's definitely five volts TTL signals, um, nothing special here. Um, so super easy to, to reproduce. So now I'm going to disconnect the unit from the power, just to be safe. And I'm going to power my OCXO and make sure that the output of the OCXO is compatible with this. In order to make calibration easier, I installed some um, pieces of connector on connectors here so I can probe there. That's the 10 MHz output, that's the ground. Uh, if I do another revision of that circuit, I'll definitely add something to make calibration easier, but that, that's not a big inconvenience. Um, this is the input power terminal. So I'm going to turn on the OCXO now. So it's on now. Uh, obviously the OCXO is cold, so I'm not going to do a calibration or anything. The purpose of the test now is not to look at the frequency, it's simply to look at the output um, waveform of the OCXO. So I can simply connect my, my scope like this. And so what do we see here? We see some um, voltage spikes here, but that's probably from my probing setup, which is far from ideal. But generally speaking, the voltage levels are exactly the same. We have two volts per div, approximately 4.5 volts high, zero volts low. So I would say that everything is compatible. It, it should work fine in the unit. So what I'm going to do now is simply install the oscillator 
inside the counter. In order to do that, I need to identify where I can take the permanent power from the output of the transformer. And I did some reverse engineering on the circuit board, and there is a conveniently located terminal here, uh, right at the um, switch, the, the, the main power switch, which, have, which has the permanent 12 volt here. So I can simply solder my power input wire to here, and it will be fine. So it will be a super easy modification. Okay, so I disconnected my OCXO board. I'm now going to install it inside. It's super easy, it just slides right in. And now I simply have to solder the wire to the, um, to the proper terminal. And that's it, not more. So now I can simply turn the power on to the counter and it's going to energize the OCXO immediately. And sure enough, when I connect the AC power to the counter, the OCXO starts and uh, if I turn the counter on, I can see that it displays something very close to 10 megahertz. Let me show you. So it is off by just 1.4 hertz. And what I'm going to do now um, is try to calibrate it to zero on the instrument, but that won't be a super precise calibration. The reason for that is because I am limited by the resolution of the counter. And what I want to do, ideally, when you calibrate an equipment like that, you want the resolution of your calibration to be higher than the resolution of the instrument you're calibrating. So, but, but it, it will still give me a course adjustment and uh, it's pretty easy. I just have to turn the, um, the trimmer next to the OCXO and it's going to give me uh, a change in frequency. One quick note, obviously, before doing that, you want to wait for the OCXO to settle maybe for a week or something like that. With permanent power, don't unplug it, just give it time to settle. And uh, yeah, for the benefit of the video, we will assume I did that, I didn't. But yeah, just wait for a week and then you can do the calibration. So what we, what we see here is that the frequency is a bit too high and I'm going to try to reduce it. So I'm just going to turn in one direction and see what happens. Um, because I have, um, a measuring time of 10 seconds to get the highest resolution, I have to wait for some time after I turn the trimmer um, for the effects to be visible. So I turned it slightly clockwise and it reduced the frequency a bit. So I'm going to continue turning it clockwise a little bit for each measurement cycle until I get something closer to 10 megahertz. We are getting close, we are now less than one hertz off. Now we are 0.2 Hz off, 0.1 Hz off. Okay, now it's reading 10 MHz, not more, not less. But it doesn't mean it's exactly 10 MHz, we're just limited by the precision of the instrument. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use an oscilloscope to look at the phase of the internal clock and compare it with the phase variation of um, an, uh, a, a reference such as my OC, um, sorry, my GPSDO. And that will allow me to have a very, very fine-tuned calibration. So let's do that now. So what I have now is on channel one, which is the yellow trace on the scope, the one with a rectangular signal, I have the output of the OCXO replacement board. And on channel 2, which is the light blue trace on the scope, I have the output of my GPSDO. And the trigger of the scope has been set up so that the scope is triggered on channel 2, which is why the trace uh, from the GPSDO, from the reference, is fixed. And it's super interesting because what we know, based on the calibration that we've done with the instrument, is that the frequencies are really, really close. But they're not quite exact. 
and you can see it here on the scope because you have a very slight variation and it appears like if it was shifting but in fact it's not a shift it's actually a very slight difference of frequency which explains why the yellow trace is moving so our mission now is to really really finely tune the um, the frequency output of the OCX replacement board so that both traces stay aligned as much as possible and it's not super important to be 100% super precise the reason for that is we are already at the precision of the reading of the unit but we want to try to be as close as possible to 10.0000 megahertz but it doesn't have to be 100% perfect what we want is the precision of the calibration of this frequency source to be higher than the precision of the instrument if we can achieve that we are golden okay so i'm simply going to take a small screwdriver i don't have a plastic screwdriver that's normally what you would use to prevent any short circuit any capacitive coupling and other effects but uh, you get the idea anyway what, what i want to show you today is really the process uh, you can always do it a bit better if you want oops my camera wants to go away so i just put the screwdriver at the proper location and now you see as i adjust if i adjust in one direction you can see that the trace goes actually faster and if i adjust in the other direction it reverses so it, it means i went too far so i can adjust the settings of the scope to make the variation a bit easier to see like this and i'm now going to use a trimmer to try to keep the um, the two signal in sync and, and you see now it's almost not moving actually i believe it's really nice like this if we wait enough there will be a shift but clearly now the frequencies are really 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 super close to each other and that's the way you probably want to do this calibration don't stop at the reading you get from the instrument if you have the possibility you take a scope like this and you you calibrate using the, the phase variation of the um, the traces like that because yeah it's uh, dead on so what i'm going to do now is simply disconnect my instrumentation and my camera also <laughs> wants to go and the way i've done it is that uh, i can simply leave the pins in place just close the instrument and uh, it's fine okay good we can do a quick verification we can connect the, um, the 10 megahertz reference from the GPSDO to the counter, see if we still have 10 megahertz. Well, of course we do, but it's good to check. Let's take a quick look. Yep, it's, it's, it's actually, it's interesting. It's slightly, slightly, slightly off. That's probably because I didn't wait enough time for the, the unit to settle once I close the, ca the, the case because when I close the case I change the environment of the DOCXO which means that because it was open before the heater was working a bit harder and now that I've closed it it means that it takes some time for the control loop of the OCXO to adjust so the heater was probably working a bit too high you see it's, uh, it's like oscillating between the proper frequency and, it, and once the control loop of this OCXO will be adjusted, it will stay at 10 megahertz dead on. So that's it for today. That's what I wanted to show you, how to calibrate this type of equipment. As you see, um, this small replacement design is working perfectly. I can now store the original um, frequency reference of the instrument. And uh, I can do the same modification for my other counter, which is a PM6669, and that's the PM6665. Great little instrument. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, feel free to comment, ask any question. Uh, you can also suggest improvements. And uh, see you next time. It was nice uh, presenting that to you. Bye.